Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the combined first and second law of thermodynamics in terms of uh, both the energy form and the enthalpy form. Before we get started though, I wanted to talk about two forms of the first law of thermodynamics that you've probably seen before and talk about why they're both correct depending on how you define the terms. On the top in black I have to define the first form and on the bottom in red I have to define the second form. Let's talk about the top one first. You can see we have DE is equal to DQ plus DW here. These are lowercase letters because I'm talking about the per mass basis, so the intensive variables, and this D is a normal D while these are DELs because this is an exact differential where the value does not depend on the path that is taken, and the DELs are written like this because these are uh, inexact differentials because uh, these values do depend on the path that was taken from state to state. So DE is defined as the change of energy of the system. DQ in this case is defined as the heat added to the system and DW is the work done on the system. So you can see our system here is outlined in this dash. Uh, we have a certain uh, energy, E, and here based on this definition we are adding heat to the system and we're doing work on the system. And you would assume that the energy of the system would increase if you were adding heat to it, and that it would increase when the surroundings are doing work on the system, which is why this equation makes sense. You might have seen this before. Now if we go down to the second version here, it's very similar except for this minus sign here, and you can see that it's this very similar. DE is equal to DQ minus DW now. DE is defined the same way. It's the change of the energy of the system. DQ is defined the same way. It's the heat added to the system. But now DW is defined differently, where it's the work done by the system. So in the drawing over here, we have the same system, and uh, it has the energy of the system E, and we're adding heat to it, and now the system is doing work on the surroundings. So it's the work done by the system on the surroundings. Again, you would anticipate that the uh, energy of the system E would increase if we add heat to it, but now if the system is doing work on the surroundings, you would assume that the energy would decrease of the system because it's essentially transferring some of that energy to the surroundings, which is why there's this minus sign here based on how we define dW. But you will note that both of these are the same uh, because if you look at this, this picture might help here, that if we have the work done by the system on the surroundings, you see the arrows going out to the surroundings, and if we have a negative of that, the arrow just flips the other way, and it's the same as as uh, as this statement up here. So these are two equivalent ways of saying the same thing. It just depends on how you want to write them. I just want to back up one second to another way to define the first law of thermodynamics that might help with uh, your intuition on the second law of thermodynamics, and it's that we can state the first law in this form here, uh, which is a cyclic integral of the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system is equal to zero. So if I look at these states here, state one and state two, we know that a state variable doesn't depend on the path uh, on the path taken to go from state one to state two. So if we go along this path here from state one to state two, we can come back to the same state this way or this way, or this way, and it won't matter, we will always get back to the same state, the state variables will still be the same to, no matter what path we took to get there and what path we took to get back. And this cyclic integral is saying that same statement here where what it's actually saying is uh, if we go from state one to state two along a certain path uh, or in a certain arbitrary path and then back to state one again to the same state that we started at, this term here, the cyclic integral of this dq minus dw will be equal to zero and because this cyclic integral is equal to zero it defines a state variable and that state variable is defined as the energy of that system. So that's where the DE comes from in the sense that it's defined by this cyclic integral equaling zero. And you'll see that pop up again in the definition of the entropy, which is a state variable from the second law of thermodynamics. Now in foreshadowing for how we can get the combined first law and second law of thermodynamics, uh, think about the different paths that can be taken from state one to state two. Uh, we said that the state variables don't depend on the path. So we can take any amount of infinite paths between state one and state two, and if we get back to state one, we will still get the same state variables that we had before, but we can specify a certain path and we can call it reversible. And that means that there's no uh, dissipative losses such as friction, etc. And so if we specify that there's a reversible path, maybe we can get 
a quantity for dq and for dw specified to a, re to a reversible process that gives us these values in terms of state variables. Now we're going to see how we can get dq and dw for the first law to plug into the first law. If you look at this term here, it was found that the cyclic integral of the term dq reversible over t uh, was equal to zero. And if you want a more in-depth in -depth discussion about this, please go see Richard Feynman's uh, physics lectures. Uh, so if this is equal to zero, based off of what I said before, the cyclic integral of something, if that cyclic integral is equal to zero, it defines a new state variable. And so this new state variable uh, was called entropy, and we'll denote it by S here. We're going to use a lowercase s because we're dealing with intensive variables because this dq uh, is intensive, so per unit mass. So <clears throat> we define that then as ds is equal to the term that's in these parentheses here, the dq reversible over the temperature. If we rearrange this, we can get a term for, or an expression for the reversible heat added to the system. dq reversible is equal to TDS. Now we can define the dw term that we're going to plug into the first law. If we look at this enclosure here that has a pressure P, we're pushing on, on this with a piston here with a force F plus DF over a distance DX. And we're pushing from this dash line to that dash line. The work is defined as the dot product of the force times the distance or the dot product of the force and the distance. And if we take this force, plug it in here, and the distance that, it were, that we're pushing over is DX, then we have this term here. And so we want to get this in terms of pressure so we can know or note that pressure is the defined as the force over the area. So if we rearrange it, we get the force is equal to the pressure times the area. And so if we plug this in into here and here, we get uh, P times A plus DP times A. Note that the area is not changing because the area is the same. It's just the area of the face of the piston here. If we distribute through by DX to both terms, we get PA DX plus DP DX times A. And the product of two differentials is very small compared to the other terms. So we end up uh, neglecting this term here, and we only end up with PA dx. And you'll note that A times dx is actually dv, d volume. And so what we end up getting is the reversible work is equal to the negative pressure times d volume. Volume is denoted by this V with a bar through it, so you don't think it's velocity. And if we divide this by the mass, we can get it into the intensive form. Right now it's in the extensive form because it uh, does depend on mass. But if we get it into the intensive form by divided by mass, we get the lowercase. Uh, dw reversible uh, is equal to negative p times and then the volume divided by the mass ends up being mil, uh, meters cubed per kilogram which is the specific volume lowercase v. So we end up with this uh, this term dw reversible is equal to negative p dv uh, as the reversible work done on the system. If we go back to what I talked about before and like the first part of the video about the two different forms of the first law and how they were equivalent in here we get this negative PDV as the work done on the system. You can see we defined it uh, or derived this because of this F pushing in on this piston and it's doing work on the system here. And the reason that we have this negative here is because if we're doing work on the system, we want that work, okay, if I defined this, this is what we would be plugging it into, is this this equation for the first law. So we have the change in the energy is equal to the heat added plus the work done on the system. And so if we're doing work on the system here, we end up having the, when you, when you see this piston pushing in on this, you end up seeing that the volume is actually decreasing. And so the reversible work, if you have a volume that's decreasing, in order to get work done on the system, we're trying to when you do work on the system, you increase the energy. The only way to do this is to have this negative sign here that ends up uh, that ends up negating the negative change in volume when you're doing work on the system. You can also see that if we define this or derive this based off of a negative F that's pulling it out or that's uh, where the system is doing work on the surroundings, this would actually be a plus sign because the volume would be increasing. Now we can put what we derived for dq and dw reversibly into the first law 
of thermodynamics, which I've written up here in this form, the dE is equal to dQ plus dW, where dQ is the heat added, and dW is the work done on the system. And if we assume a reversible process now, then we have these two equations, which are what we had on the previous whiteboards. dQ reversible is equal to TdS, and dW reversible is equal to negative PdV. And if you plug these in up into here, then we end up with this equation, dE is equal to TdS minus PdV, and this is this first law and second law combined uh, laws of thermodynamics. And it's not just for a reversible process, which is sort of confusing because we derived it for a, reverse, for a reversible process. Uh, but you'll note that this equation is only a function of state variables, and by definition, state variables don't depend on the path that's taken. So what it seems like we did was we started at state one and went to state two. And so we have a change in these state variables. And there's an infinite number of paths um, that you can take to get from state one to state two. We chose the reversible path, this black one, and it just so happens that we can define these dQ and dW terms reversibly that end up being functions of only state variables, plug them in here. Now that it's only a function of state variables, it doesn't depend on the path. So you, so you get this combined first law, which, which will be uh, super useful for uh, subsequent videos that I make. Now let's throw this into an enthalpy form, which is also really useful. So I've rewritten this equation up here, this combined first and second law in terms of the energy E. And now we'll define the enthalpy H, which is defined as E plus P V. And you'll also see that as E plus P over rho because the specific volume is also uh, the inverse of the density. But we're gonna use this form here and we're gonna take the differential of this equation because what we're trying to do is get rid of E and plug in H. So we need to get DE. So we're gonna take the differential of this whole equation and don't forget the chain rule on this PV term here. So we'll take DH first. DE here, and now we have plus PDV plus VDP. And now we're going to solve for DE because we want to plug that into this equation here. So I've just subtracted this term and this term to the other side. So we have DE is equal to DH minus PDV minus VDP. If we plug that into the top equation, we'll just take this DE, throw it up into this equation here. So on the left hand side, we just have this left hand side. On the right hand side, we just have this here. And if we can cancel the like terms, you can see that the PDV term here is the same as the PDV term here. So if we add this PDV to both sides, it ends up canceling out here. And then if we move this term to the other side, we just add this to both sides, we get the final form, which is DH here is equal to TDS plus VDP. It's just another form of the combined first and second law that could be useful in the future. Thanks for watching.